Hey, True Believers, it's Anglantine here. And this story has been told, but I wanted to wait to put my two cents in. I, I gave a little bit because somebody asked me, what do I think of Walmart and DC teaming up to put out comic books? And it's very simple. I think it's a great idea. I really do. I, if you, first of all, this isn't anything new. It's what it used to be. Comic books were in 7-Elevens and, uh, and Walmarts and Kmart and everywhere else in the world before Diamond got a hold of them. So this isn't a new frontier. It's been, it has happened before. And I think getting comic books in front of as many people as possible is only a good thing. So, what's wrong? Uh, well, I'm going to get into that. See, this is why I didn't really do a video on this, because I, I wanted to wait for the other shoe to drop. There's always another shoe, it seems like. So, I part of the problem, okay, first of all, the write-up was, this summer, Walmart shoppers will receive personal invitation to discover the lore behind their favorite DC experiences as DC Entertainment announced today that a series of giant monthly comics will be sold exclusively in more than 3,000 participating Walmart stores around the country. Good thing. Absolutely. And now we know that there's going to be a Batman, a Superman, so forth and so on. However, there's going to be a 12-part story by Tom King and a 12-part Batman story by Brian Michael Bendis coming up in September, and it is going to be exclusive to Walmart. Uh, let's say we are extraordinarily excited about working with Walmart to expand the reach of our books, says Dan Didio. These new monthly books combine new and accessible stories with reprints of classic comics. It's a great way for new readers to get into comics and follow the characters they've grown to love in TV and film. Well, maybe TV, but nobody's grown to love the DC characters from the film. Well, Batman, maybe. And, of course, Christopher Reeve's Superman. So, anyway, what do we get here? The Superman Giant, number one, features chapter one of the two-part Endurance, an original storyline written by Jimmy Palmiotti, and with art by Tom Dernick, who did uh, Harley Quinn, Cyborg, and Batman Superman. The Daily Planet sends Clark to Tornado Alley to do a story on the area, but when the storm hits, it turns out that this mild-mannered reporter is more helpful as Superman. And the issue also includes... The Terrifics number one. <laughs> All righty, it's a reprint of the Terrifics number one, which we know is good, and Green Lantern number one from 2005 with uh, Jeff Johns and Ethan Van Skyver. So congratulations to him and his royalties right there. Uh, it's going to also include Superman Batman number one from 2003, September's Superman Giant number three features Eisner Award winner writing uh, Eisner Award winning writer Tom King's first return to the Man of Steel sends his poignant and heartfelt tribute story for tomorrow in the pages of Action Comics 1000. Together with the DC Masterclass artist Andy Kubert, this powerhouse team will take readers on a new 12 part adventure titled Up in the Sky. When a little girl is kidnapped and taken from Earth, Superman embarks on a galaxy spanning mission to find its perpetrators, but has to decide what lengths he will go to in order to save one life. And we have the Teen Titans. In this original six-part Teen Titans story by Dan Jurgens, with art by Scott Eaton, Wayne Falker, and Jim Charlampidus, the Teen Titans pizza dinner is interrupted by the introduction of a new villain, the Disruptor. Teaming up with the Fearsome Five and working as an agent of Hive, he had one mission, kill the Teen Titans. The battle spills onto the streets of San Francisco, putting the citizens at risk, while Hive uses this distraction to begin their plan for world conquest. It also includes Super Sons number one, so good on that. Sideways number one, so they're also pushing the new age of heroes. Hopefully this will give them a boost. Because they definitely deserve that boost. And the 2003 Teen Titans, which will kind of like defeat the goodwill that the other stories give them. But okay, I'm not a big fan of, two, of New 52 Teen Titans, but that's just me. And then of course you have the Batman. 
Batman is on the case of a missing girl in One More Chance, an all-new story written by Jimmy Palmiotti and artist Patrick Patch Zerker. Batman is the world's greatest detective, but what happens when the trail of his newest case, case excuse me, leads him back to the place from his past that he never expected to revisit? Batman Giant number one also includes Batman 608, written by Jeff Loeb's and art by Jim Lee. It kicks off the Hush storyline. We also get 2000s, 2011's Nightwing number one, and that's from Rebirth. And then we get Harley Quinn Rebirth number one. Uh, and, uh, yep, and that's it. Uh, oh, wait, beginning with Batman Giant number three in September, superstar writer Brian Michael Bendis makes his DC debut on Dark Knight with a 12 part story universe. Batman run, Batman's run-in with the Riddler leads the Cape Crusader into a mystery that spans the globe. And last but not least, there is the Justice League number one. Justice League member Wonder Woman is spotlighted in The Conversion, an all-new story from Nightwing writer Tim Seeley. He's a good writer. And artist Rick Leonardi and Steve Buchet, Buccellato. In this single-issue story, Wonder Woman comes face-to-face with Ares, God of War, who sees her as a promising new recruit. I can understand that. They want to get a little bit off of the movie. So, uh, yeah, okay. It also uh, has Justice League number one from 2011. That's Rebirth. Flash number one from Rebirth. Aquaman number one. In issue two, Steely teams up with artist Felipe Watanabe and Chris Sotomayor on Mother's Day, a standalone story where Wonder Woman returns to Paradise Island for the first time since her exile, only to find that the Amazons and Queen, Hi- Queen Hippolyta have been abducted by Echidna, Echidna, the mythological mother of monsters with a brood of unstoppable beasts as children. And in issue three... It begins another original 12-part Wonder Woman story by Harley Quinn co-writers Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti called Come Back to Me. Okay, but what about the rest? I mean, this is a Wonder Woman book, it's sounding like, not Justice League. I don't know. But anyway, those are the books uh, Walmart are having to offer. And here's the deal. Here's the problem. Comic shops aren't liking it. Yep, you wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think that there would be a problem because in the end, wouldn't anything outside bring comics? I mean, hey, I like these comics. I want to go get more. Where can I find them? Oh, you can look in the comic book shops. It just seems like uh, one and one equals two to me, but apparently it's been uh, ticking off a number of retailer tailors who have expressed severe misgivings uh, over the fact that these are being released. One actually says, I'm actually going to work my ass off to cannibalize sales of any lower tier creator supporting the DC Comics Walmart deal. I need the top creators. Bottom creators? No. They sound like the whole thing that was going on with Jawbreakers. You don't like the fact that there's going to be exclusive story that you can't get? That's what they're mad at, by the way. They're mad at the fact that Tom King and Brian Michael Bendis have exclusive stories over here. Well, the whole thing is, you know, okay, I can understand it. Anybody who knows Brian Michael Bendis and Tom King are already into comics, and they're not going to be going to comic book shops. Instead, they're going to be going to Walmart to pick these books up. But the whole thing is, is at least in Tom King, you've got a top-notch writer that may bring money to your shop, you douche. I guess I, I can I can see how they can arrive to the conclusion that they do, that this is a bad thing. Ex-DC editor Heidi Mc, McDonald, if they jumped to that conclusion, if they do any kind of deep thinking on it, it is a good thing for the market. Yes, okay, there's a, there's a story from Tom King you're not getting. There's a story from Brian Michael Bendis that's going somewhere else. But to say, well, I'm going to tank everybody who's small enough for me to affect. Come on. Come on. Those 48 pages, those 48 pages every month would end up being somewhere at the top of a comic book store's uh, top 10. You know, I do the top 10 every week, and this would appear. 
So I can understand a little bit. Like I said, I can understand why they came to that conclusion, but it's almost like free comic book day. Give away those 48 pages. Give away those 48 pages and see how many people come back, how many people go into the specialty shop to see what's next or to see what else is out there. At least that's the way I see it. You know, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not an economist. I I would uh, leave that up to Captain Frugal. But in the end, I can only see this as a good thing. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? What do you think about the 100-page comics going to Walmart? Do you think it's a good idea, bad idea? Do you think it's good for the uh, comic book market, or do you think it's bad? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, click like, click share, get word about the channel out. That's always a good thing. And don't forget to hit subscribe and that notification bell. Sometimes YouTube does that job and does their job and actually tells you when we have a video out. Not often, but it's a nice thing when they do. And cool things happen around these parts. Also, this is the way we're trying to make a living. So if you don't mind helping the channel out, go on over to Patreon. Drop a dollar on the in the till and help us keep the lights on. Help us keep making videos for you. We'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.